So, this is where it all happens, the assembly chamber. So, really, if you think about it, us having the ability to pass laws and decide on important decisions about our schools and hospitals, it's really quite a new thing for us. Yeah, you're right, it is quite new. But a lot of people think that devolution is a good thing. I mean, Scotland and Wales, they have devolution. Oh yeah, of course. I guess it gives us more of a say in things like our health and education systems and on the environment. Yeah. Okay, I get how the assembly came about, but how does it actually work? Right, okay. Northern Ireland is divided up into 18 separate areas and they're sometimes known as constituencies. Now, each constituency elects six members of the Legislative Assembly, right? Now, that's an MLA for short. So that means that Northern Ireland has 108 MLAs in total. MLA? Is that another word for politician? Yeah, you're right. An MLA is a politician who's elected to make decisions on our behalf. Now, most of the MLAs are members of political parties. And can anyone join these political parties? Yeah. And most of these political parties, they would have a youth wing. Now, a political party is formed whenever a group of people come together who feel strongly about certain issues, so they would elect a leader, and then when it comes around to an election time, well, they would put people forward to be elected in each one of these constituencies. So can we vote for these people? Well, you can when you're 18, but you're not 18 yet. And then, of course, when you're 18, you have to register. OK, well, when I am 18, how do I register? Well, all you do is you download an electoral registration form from the electoral office and you fill it in and you sign it and you send it back to the electoral office. It's as simple as that, really. But how do you know who to vote for? Each of the political parties set out their ideas in something called a manifesto. Vote for me. Check out my manifesto on Facebook. I'm campaigning for longer school holidays, ban all school uniform, free travel for the under 21s, free downloads, more student discounts. Vote for me, Carla for number one. So what do these 108 MLAs do when they're elected? Well, on Monday and Tuesday, the MLAs come here to the Assembly Chamber and they'll debate issues and pass laws. Now, this is what's known as the plenary meeting. But um, there's very strict rules that the MLAs have to stick to whenever they're debating. And the person that makes sure that these rules are followed is called the Speaker. Now the Speaker sits over there. And the Speaker is also the person that tells the MLAs when it's their turn to speak. Sounds like a bit of a tricky job. Don't know if I fancy that. You're right, it is a bit of a tricky job. Well, as you can imagine, sometimes the debates become very, very heated, so it's a difficult job. Could I remind members? But the supplementary must relate to the question. And let me say to any member who gets up and knows order and knows quite well the supplementary is asking, doesn't relate to the question, will not catch my eye in this house for a long time for a supplementary. But the speaker is kind of like a, well, he's kind of like a referee. He's got to be neutral at all times. Um, he's an elected MLA like everybody else, but he still has to be, you know, neutral. And, uh, well, it just wouldn't be fair if he was seen to be taking sides. Oh, well, I can see why that would be important. Yeah, but not only that, you see, the speaker is the head of the business committee. And the business committee decides what's actually going to be debated within the assembly. And he's also the head of the Assembly Commission, and the Assembly Commission is the group of people that looks after the running of the Assembly. Busy man then, plenty of meetings. Uh, and not only that, you see, sometimes he would have to host important people that would come over here, so he would also have to, well, he'd be the host of a lot of VIP functions. But what about his own constituents? Surely he'd have to look after them as well? Well, now, that is a very good point, Carla, because he is still an elected MLA, so he still has to look after the interests and the issues of the people in his constituency, so he still has to, you know, answer their emails and answer their phone calls. But back to the point you were saying there about plenary, plenary, plenary meetings, yeah, yeah. could I go to one of these? Of course you could. Anybody can go to one of those. I mean, the whole point of democracy is that it's an open and transparent form of government. So all you've got to do is come up here and take your place in the visitors' gallery. And all of the debates, they're recorded by cameras and they're broadcast on the internet. And you can just check that out on the Assembly website. So all MLAs do is 
sit in chambers and debate about things. Well, no, Carla, there's far more to it than that. I mean, some MLAs do sit on committees about the environment and health, but there are other MLAs that get an additional job and they will become ministers. Now, a minister is in charge of an entire government department, so that would mean you'd be in charge of the Department of the Environment or the Department of Education. Now, I've heard of ministers, but to be honest with you, I have no idea what they do. The ministers form an executive committee, and they're the ministers from the largest parties, and they meet here at Stormont Castle. Now, they'll decide a budget, and that will mean they'll decide how much money is given to each individual government department. So they'll decide how that money's spent, and that's what's known as the programme for government. All right, so is there someone in charge of the executive committee? You're following this really well, Carla. In fact, there's two people in charge. Do you remember that wee piece that I showed you about the power sharing between the nationalists and the unionists? Oh, yeah. Well, the executive's headed up by two ministers, one unionist MLA and one nationalist MLA, and they're known as the first minister and the deputy first minister. So, why do we need two people in charge? Well, I suppose before the 1998 agreement, you know, it was difficult to get people to make any sort of agreement. So the two leaders have agreed to work together and to share the power. And they're the first minister and the deputy first minister. And they've also got two junior ministers to help to assist them. So can the ministers and the executive decide on whatever laws they want? Well, they can come up with ideas for laws, but because you've got ministers from all sorts of different political parties and with all different sorts of viewpoints, it can be very hard sometimes to reach agreement. Mm. So whenever it comes down to making a law, that can really slow down the process. But, you know, the MLAs, they keep an eye on the ministers and their work. Now, there's always 11 MLAs on each committee, and each committee will meet on a Tuesday, a Wednesday and a Thursday. And you know, just like those plenary sessions that we were talking about earlier, well, anybody can come up and have a look at those, and you can see what those committees are discussing. The executive is clearly the decision-making cabinet-style approach um, to government, and um, it is accountable to the Assembly and the Assembly holds the Executive to account um, through uh, questioning and amending legislation, through the committee structure here in the Assembly, and also through questions to ministers, either written or oral, through adjournment debates. So the Assembly has a very important function, and it's only right and proper that it holds the Executive to account. OK, so let me see if I've got this right. If I'm an MLA, I'm either a minister in charge of a government department or I'm sitting on a committee checking up on the minister? Aye, that's right. Okay. And the MLA sitting on the committees, they keep an eye on the ministers. Do they make sure they're doing a good job? Yeah, I suppose you're right, Carla. The uh, committees exist to make sure that the ministers make effective laws. And you'll find that the MLAs are from a wide range of political parties that sit on these committees, and I suppose that's just to make sure that, well, that it's fair and that everybody's voice is represented. All right, so let me see if I've got this straight, because my head is spinning. <laughs> so, MLAs are locally elected, and there's 108 of them in total in Northern Ireland. Yes, from the 18 constituencies. Right. And we have two leaders, a first minister and a deputy first minister, plus there are two junior ministers. And then some of the MLAs are selected to be ministers and they look after the different areas of government. Yep. And they form? The executive committee. And the other MLAs sit on committees and these make sure that the ministers in the executive are doing a good job, like checking up on them and making suggestions. That's right, Carla. You've got it. The uh, committees are there to scrutinise the ministers and their relevant departments. But the committees will also invite people up who have expertise in various fields to get their expert advice. Sure, I'm surprised I wasn't asked myself. There's nothing I don't know about taxis. <laughs> well, here, you know your man, um, Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol? He's been up as an expert. He met the Committee for Culture, Arts and Leisure and they discussed the lack of rehearsal space, the lack of recording studios and how they're going to encourage young talent. All right, seriously? Snow Patrol? Why was I not here on that day? <sighs> there are two real facets to the way that this assembly works. One is that most of the power is vested in the minister. So there will be a minister for education. But to make sure that the Minister for Education, or the Minister for Health for that matter, 
that they don't go off and do everything just that they want to do, that they take on board the views of everybody else, that you have a committee made up of MLAs from all different parties and they scrutinise the work of the Minister and occasionally they give helpful suggestions about, how, about things that they might want to look at. The Committee for Finance and Personnel that I sit on not only scrutinises the work of the department in terms of what they do, but the committee can hold inquiries into particular areas of work. On Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, I do have a committee meeting on each of the mornings for the Social Development Committee and the Employment and Learning Committee. Both committees are of great importance to young people's lives as well. Committees can also um, generate policy, generate uh, legislation, make laws. So it's very, very important work um, that committees do. Legislation will come to the committee and on that we then have to go through legislation clause by clause um, saying any changes that we would like. I think particularly of a housing bill that's going through the, the, the house at the minute. Um, which my committee, the Social Development Committee, scrutinised and there are at least a dozen changes to the legislation that's going to be made as a direct result of what the committee took an interest in. We can ask the Minister senior officials to come before us or the Minister him or herself and we can ask them questions about any aspect of that department's life or business and it's our job to shine a torch into every area of government activity within that department. So if plenary is Monday and Tuesday, right, and committees are Wednesdays and Thursdays, then what do MLAs do on a Friday? Well, on Fridays the MLAs will be back in their constituency. They'll be looking after the needs of the people within their constituency. And all of the MLAs, they'll keep an office in their constituency. All oh, right. Well, I suppose then that would be the best way to get in touch with them if you had an issue maybe that you wanted to discuss. Yeah, there's lots of ways of contacting them. You can always drop them a wee email. <laughs> Bet you MLAs don't use Facebook. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong. Some of them do use Facebook. Some of them use some of those other social networking sites as well. And some of them are very keen on Twitter. But, you know, there's loads of ways that you can contact your MLA. Like, you could uh, arrange to meet them, you can give them a phone call, you can drop them an email, or, well, if you want to be old-fashioned, you can just write them a good old-fashioned letter. Yeah, right, and I'm out of it.